from the comfort of our homes. This is Braves Beat. Hello Braves, this is Rama Sardar along with Julianne Lambert with our fifth episode of Fourth Quarter that is being produced from the comfort of our own homes. So Julianne, you probably know that this past Tuesday was Cinco de Mayo. Did you do anything special to celebrate on Tuesday? Not really, but I heard a story about a Mexican magician who said he will disappear on the count of three. So he says uno, dos, and then disappears without a trace. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> Very funny, Julianne. Well, we do have a lot to share with you today, so let's get on with the news. May 4th through the 8th is National Teacher Appreciation Week. During these difficult times, we have learned to appreciate our teachers more than ever. We are so lucky to have these great teachers at Indian Hill Schools. So, even though today is the last day of the week, there is still time to send a thank you message to your teachers. Come on, Braves, let's show our teachers just how much we care. Ohio DECA just announced the award winners for state. Julian Miller had the opportunity to speak with Mr. Saeed and Mrs. Schoenauer to discuss how the state winners were determined. Julia? Hey Braves, I'm Julia Miller and today I have our two awesome DECA advisors here. Thank you for coming. So how have you both been doing during this difficult time? Well, it definitely has been difficult and different. Uh, the hardest thing is just not being with all of you guys. That, that makes it difficult. Yeah, I would agree. We're, we're people, people, and we like to interact um, with students all the time. So I'm sure all the other teachers would say the same thing. But yeah, it's just been a challenge not seeing um, a lot of people every day. I know the students miss all the teachers. Um, so we heard that DECA announced the state results last week. How did that happen with all of the state home orders? Well, what they did was all of our students uh, that were required to do tests had already tested online a few weeks earlier before the uh, DECA competition. So they were just going to do their test scores. For the people who had written entries, like yourself, um, we had a, uh, a link that we were able to uh, open up and then download the uh, uh, written events. Those were then read by judges and they were just scored on the reading part. So that's how the actual scores came out. That is very interesting. Are there any particular students you would like to mention at this time? Wow, I, I just want to give a quick shout out to, I had a lot of uh, first year students, ninth graders, that really did a lot of on their own work to get to this point. And I'm just kind of cheating and looking at my list, but I did have Julianne Alspa and Emerson Evans get second place, which was really great. And also um, third place, Ryan Ramaker and Annie Esferding and Annie Joy. Um, and, and they are all just semester students. So not an easy task to do that well with only a semester class. And for me, I would like to really give the shout out to our, our champions. Uh, I had uh, Morgan Coburn, David Halbrin as a team, uh, got first place. Lauren Sewell and David Slattery, first place. Fonda de Rostogi, individual event, first place. And Emily Sitchell also uh, first place. That is so awesome. Is there anything else you'd like to tell our viewers about DECA or your program? I think the biggest thing about DECA is it's a face-to-face -face thing. It's a, it's a presentation type of event. So without the presentation, you know, who knows what the scores would have been. And I mean, it's, it's just like everything else, this is the best that we can do with the situation that we're in. So we're happy that um, some work got recognized, but you know, again, um, missing out on that presentation really is missing out on everything. And I would say that just DECA in itself uh, gives students opportunity to show what they can do. You know, we, we know you're all smart, you know, you, you get great test scores, you have uh, uh, all sorts of high, high marks, but to then be able to take your personality, your knowledge, your skills, and be able to go up one-on-one -on -one, comp compete with other people uh, really shows uh, the merit of everything that you do. Well, thank you so much for taking time to speak with me today. Back to you, Rama and Julianne. Thanks, Julia, for that interesting report. And congratulations to all our IH State DECA winners and placers. With the current COVID-19 pandemic, BEST, or Better Education for Stronger Teeth, has extended efforts to fight the spread of the coronavirus. Since February, BEST has donated 4,000 plus masks to hospitals locally in Cincinnati, including the Cincinnati VA Hospital, the Children's Hospital, and more. Please join our mission to fight against the pandemic. As hospitals continue to express a strong need for sufficient medical equipment, 
Any donation would continue our support to our local hospitals and our community. Please donate via the GoFundMe page in the link in the description, or share the link with family and friends. If you have any questions or would like to know more, please contact Sophia Zhao at sophia.zhao22 at ihsd.us. Thank you to all Braves who participated in the Indian Hill Foundation's Conquer the Hill hashtag One Brave social media campaign. Here are some of the photos that were shared over social media on Saturday, April 25th. Thanks to all of our Braves in the community who came out to participate and share their photos. The coordinators of the College Board's AP European History Review, Todd Beach and Katie Lancey, gave a shout out today to our freshmen for sending in so many questions and so many samples of writing. Unfortunately, they mistakenly called us the Indians, but we all know we are the Braves. Way to go, freshmen! 49 annual high school students earned National Latin Exam Awards, 7 Braves claimed gold medals, Indian High School salutes all 106 students who successfully completed the National Latin Exam and celebrate the 49 Braves who earned awards. Jensen Cassidy spoke with Mrs. Burgess earlier this week to learn more about this year's exam. Jensen? This is Jensen Cassidy here with Ms. Burgess talking about the recent Latin results. Hi Ms. Burgess, how have you been doing throughout this crisis? Hi, Jensen. Uh, we've been doing great here at the Wheel of Virgin Heart. Um, with two teachers and a first grader, there's been a lot of learning that's going on. A lot of computer time, a lot of, uh, of, of online meetings, but we've been having fun and making the best of the situation. Good, I'm glad to hear it. And can you tell us a little bit about some of the National Latin Exam winners and how our school did this year? Um, Indian Hill, once again, did a phenomenal job on the National Latin Exam. Um, we had a little over 100 students take the exam, and we did it the week before um, we were told by Governor DeWine that we were going to be staying at home. So, um, and it was actually really interesting because, um, as you know, um, the AP students ended up taking it after we went on quarantine and got to take it at home on their computers. Um, so we had a little over 100 students take the exam, and we ended up with about um, 50 awards. So about 50% of our kids won awards on the exam. So we were really pleased with that performance. Awesome. And did anyone get a book award this year? Well, unofficially, we do think we have somebody who earned their fifth gold medal. We're still waiting on official word from the NLE. And once uh, we do, we will uh, definitely let the world know about that student's outstanding performance. Well, that's so exciting. You must be so proud of all the students. I'm super proud of our students and their hard work on the NLE. Um, I always think of the NLE as kind of like um, golf. You know, golf, it's you versus the course. And for the NLE, it's you versus the exam. We, we always have a good idea of what kind of stuff's going to be on there. So we try to get students ready for it. But ultimately, it comes down to the hard work and dedication of all of our awesome Indian Hill Latin students. Mm -hmm. I bet. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. You're welcome. It was great to talk to you. Yeah, of course. Back to you, Rama and Julian. Thanks, Jensen and Mrs. Burgess, for that information. Congratulations to all of our Latin student successes. The Indian Hill Foundation just announced the Illumini Award recipients for 2020. The Young Brave Award goes to Sarah E. Sanders, class of 2008. Sarah Sanders is the co-founder of Native Age Tech, Inc., a software company based between New York City and the Midwest, focused on generating greater efficiency and transparency in our food supply chain. In 2019, Sarah was awarded the Distinguished Young Alumni Award from the University of Kentucky's Gaston College of Business and Economics, and shortly after joined the college's Emerging Leaders Board. She earned her undergraduate degree in Business Management from the University of Kentucky and her MBA in International Business from Xavier University. Congrats to Sarah! The Brave Service Award for 2020 goes to the Dorothy Cook Family Foundation. The Dorothy Cook Family Foundation honors Dorothy Cook and her lifelong commitment to education. Her children Lisa Green, Bill Cook, Jim Cook, and Susan Cook were all Indian Hill graduates. Starting in 2008, gifts from the Dorothy Cook Family Foundation, given to the Indian Hill Foundation, have totaled over $150,000 and have continued her legacy of impact by truly transforming the curriculum across the Indian Hill School District. And lastly, Dr. Candace Kendall, class of 1964, was the co-founder and former chairman and CEO of Kendall International Inc., a global clinical research organization that developed a wide range of clinical development and clinical trial services to biopharmaceutical companies around the world. Kendall International Inc. was res responsible for clinical trials of hundreds of compounds in hundreds of thousands of patients worldwide. The most notable was the development of the Celebrex. 
Congratulations to all of the 2020 Indian Hill Foundation Alumni Award recipients. Here are the important dates of the end of the school year. Seniors' last day is Friday, May 15th. Seniors will take their AP exams based on the schedule from the College Board. Students' last day of instruction is Friday, May 22nd. Teachers will be engaged in professional learning from May 26th to May 29th. The Braves Helping Braves Fund is still collecting community donations to support district families in this time of crisis. As the economic fallout continues, the Braves Helping Braves Fund will be one resource to alleviate some financial strains on our district neighbors in need. According to the Indian Hill Director of Pupil Services, Erica Leppard, five families have been assisted with more applications coming in. Daily meal delivery also continues to 70 district families. Thank you for considering a donation to the Braves Helping Braves Fund. It is a positive action you can take in these uncertain times and it is greatly appreciated. Visit the links in the, in the description for more. Hey seniors, this is Sailor Butts, and as many of you know by now, I'm creating a celebratory video for the class of 2020. And so this is a notice to anybody that's in the 13 year club to upload your pictures from kindergarten. This can be a home photo or just the regular yearbook photo into the Google Drive folder that's linked in the description. And this is also a reminder to seniors in general to upload your videos regarding your future plans and the time capsule. So that's all, thanks. Well, that's all the news that we have for this week. So Rama, are you ready for your AP exams? Well, not just yet, but I better get started soon because APs are starting in one week. Good luck on your APs, everyone. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, and email us with any school updates. And, and as, always, as always, stay classy, stay classy Indian, Indian Hill. Yo, what is up, guys? Welcome to my room. Um, today we're going to be making a Playboy Cardi type beat, so uh, let's just jump right into it. Uh, step one is just really take three notes and call it music, so... Perfect. Step two, just kind of hit your hand on the keyboard a bit while you have hi-hats on and you got his hi-hats. Follow the same process with all the other drums. Don't be afraid to just sit down on the keyboard. There you go. Now the only part that really matters for rap songs is the 808, so this is what I made for that. So all together we get So now it's time to record some vocals. The secret to Playboy Cardi is you don't have to use actual words for any of the lyrics. You just have to make a bunch of mouth noises. All right, and now we record the vocals. And when you're done with the vocals, last step is just to mix and master them. Here is the amazing final product. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. 